Portrait of a frightened man, Mr. Robert Wilson, 37, husband, father, salesman on sick leave. Mr. Wilson has just been discharged from a sanitarium where for the last six months he's been recovering from a nervous breakdown, the onset of which took place on an evening not dissimilar to this one, on an airliner very much like the one in which he is about to be flown home. The difference being that on that evening half a year ago, Mr. Wilson's flight was terminated by the onslaught of his mental breakdown. Tonight, he's traveling all the way to his appointed destination, which, contrary to Mr. Wilson's plan, happens to be in the darkest corner of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> I had another review lined up this week, uh, and then by Monday afternoon I started to see the first uh, and earliest mentions of the passing of Richard Matheson, and uh, by the time that it was confirmed, I had already switched gears. I feel this week, uh, we'll do a review next week, but this week I feel that it is absolutely necessary that we pay tribute to one of the greatest of all the horror giants out there. Uh, Richard Matheson is a writer to whom we owe a great debt of gratitude. Uh, without him, the horror and science fiction genres as we know them today would not be what they are. Directors get all the love, and writers routinely get the shaft, but check this out. George Romero may have made it work, but without I Am Legend, there would be no story of the human race living in the minority against a majority of ravenous, hungry monsters. There would be no Night of the Living Dead. There would be no wave of survival horror scenarios. Um, Stephen King name checks Matheson as the one writer who influenced him above all the rest. Uh, Ray Bradbury, Ray fucking Bradbury, has called him the most important writer of the 20th century. Richard Matheson, if you're not familiar, and it's entirely likely that you're not, not to get a hipster on your ass, uh, was a writer of horror and science fiction. And in his lifetime, he wrote a couple dozen novels, wrote dozens and dozens of short stories. He wrote scripts for movies that you've probably seen, uh, but the bulk of his work, the stuff that he's probably best known for, uh, are dozens upon dozens of episodes for television. Uh, Matheson wrote 14 episodes of The Twilight Zone, and two of his short stories were adapted for the show by Rod Serling himself. For reasons beyond my understanding, Richard Matheson was never fully celebrated as the creative powerhouse that he is. Uh, he certainly had his fans, and, and horror fans hip to classic horror practically worship at his altar, but if ever there was a man behind the curtain for the horror genre, Richard Matheson was it. Uh, tonight, we mourn his passing and celebrate his creativity with this list of my top five works of Richard Matheson. Dance of the Dead was written in 1954, and it was adapted in 2005 as part of the uh, Masters of Horror series. It was directed by uh, Toby Hooper, uh, and the script was actually written by Matheson's son. Now, Dance of the Dead takes place some unspecified time after a rather catastrophic war has rendered most of the United States to ruin. Uh, four kids, three rather rough and mean ones, and one sort of doe-eyed, uh, naive girl is off to St. Louis to see the Loopy Dance. And unfortunately, we're teased endlessly uh, until the loopy is actually revealed. Uh, and what it turns out is a loopy is a mostly dead body which has been ravaged by this plague which kills most of our brain function but leaves us moving rather spasmodically, almost like we're dancing. Now, survivors turn out to these, uh, these dances almost to revel in our own ruin. And, uh, uh, this experience kind of destroys our rather innocent protagonist. Uh, now, Matheson's written some really bleak stuff in the past, but I've always felt like this was probably his bleakest work. Um, it's filled with this sort of future-setting jargon, and uh, the main characters are so disconnected from the ordinary human experience that they're hardly recognizable as human beings at all. Uh, and even though it's steeped in science fiction and fantasy elements, um, this can almost be seen as a precursor to uh, Anthony Burgess's famous novel, A Clockwork Orange. Um, it is a stark and deeply unsettling piece of short fiction that is written in such a graphic way that it tends to really stay with you. This is a, a really dark short story. Uh, it can be found in the current collected edition of I Am Legend.
Like I said, Matheson wrote a lot for television. The first season of Star Trek features an episode called The Enemy Within. Uh, and before I go much further, I feel I have to warn you. This episode of Cinema S is rather heavy on the Shatner. Um, by some strange coincidence, Matheson wrote three pivotal episodes of television. Each one of them stars William Shatner. This is one of them. Now, The Enemy Within takes place on the Enterprise uh, as the transporter malfunctions, and it winds up splitting Captain Kirk into two versions. There's an evil Kirk and there's a good, wimpy Kirk. Uh, evil Kirk runs wild on the Enterprise, and he seems to spend most of his time trying to give Yeoman Rand the bad touch. Uh, meanwhile, with the transporter out of commission, the away team on planet Alpha-177 is slowly freezing to death. Uh, so the crew of the Enterprise must get Naughty Kirk under control and fix the transporter in time to rescue the away team before they die. The Enemy Within is a classic Race Against the Clock episode, uh, and it spends most of its time emphasizing the Jekyll and Hyde contrast between Good Kirk and Bad Kirk. Uh, but it also gives Shatner a tremendous amount of scenery to chew on, and if you know anything about William Shatner, this is what he does best. The Enemy Within is one of the best uh, episodes in the original series run, and even though it kind of lives in this shadow of episodes like Space Seed and The Trouble with Tribbles and uh, The City on the Edge of Forever, uh, this is just testament to uh, Matheson's status as an underappreciated genius of the genre. There are certain episodes of The Twilight Zone that are considered classics of television. Not just the series, I mean like television as a whole. Throwing out a line like, there's a man out on the wing is almost as good as saying something like, the rest of the book to serve man, it's a cookbook. You know, it's just it's a line that everybody knows. And if you don't, you really ought to do something about that because Nightmare at 20,000 Feet is a goddamn amazing piece of television. Now, the whole episode takes place in a row of seats on an airplane. And Shatner plays uh, Bob Wilson, who's a man who is being released from a mental hospital after recovering from a nervous breakdown that took place on an airplane. And even though he's holding it together uh, in spite of his anxiety about where he is, you know, everything's going well. That is, until he looks out the window and he sees a gremlin on the wing of the plane. Now, every time he tries to draw somebody's attention to it, it leaps out of sight. Uh, and, uh, you know, but he manages to hold it together until he looks out and sees the gremlins start to tear apart the engine, and that's when everything comes apart. Now, Matheson was really, really good about creating these little self-contained pieces of anxiety. This episode takes place on the claustrophobic confines of an airplane. The Enemy Within takes place on the bridge, a uh, sick bay and a couple of crew quarters on the Enterprise. And as you'll see in the next segment, it also takes place in a very similar setting. Now you really feel bad for Bob Wilson because uh, he's a victim of Matheson's mastery of uncertainty. It's uh, uh, something that he does in a lot of his stories. You maybe want to believe the guy that there's actually a gremlin on the plane, but maybe it's just his mind playing tricks on him and we don't really know. In the end, he winds up doomed because of circumstances beyond his control. It's great stuff. While Trekkies may agree that The Enemy Within is a classic episode of the original series, and Nightmare at 20,000 Feet is uh, an absolute staple of the medium, um, this episode, Nick of Time, is simply uh, one of my personal favorite episodes of The Twilight Zone, uh, and it might actually be my absolute favorite. Uh, and yes, it also stars Shatner. So this couple, while waiting for their car to be repaired, stops into this diner to eat. And while they're there, they feed coins to this uh, mystifying oracle on the tabletop. It's a little box with a devil's head on the top. You put a coin in, you ask it a yes or no question, and it feeds you an answer. Uh, so they're doing this for the lulls, and at one point Shatner asks if he'll get uh, a promotion at work. And so later on, when he calls the office to see how things are going, he finds out he's been given a promotion at work. Whoa. So they keep killing time, asking questions. Eventually, the tone of their questioning becomes a little more desperate, a little more frenzied, uh, until Shatner becomes convinced that uh, if they leave the diner before a certain appointed time, their lives will be in danger. Now, his wife 
tired of him being all freaked out, eventually drags him away from the table before that appointed time. And while they're crossing the street, they're nearly hit by a car and killed. And this just confirms Shatner's worst fears. So back into the diner they go, and he keeps feeding it uh, money and asking it questions until his wife manages to drag him away from it. And before the episode is resolved, uh, their place at the table is taken by a rather disheveled couple uh, who are clearly living their pathetic lives in accordance with the predictions of this machine. This is excellent Matheson right here. There's nothing explicitly supernatural about this episode. There's no spooky shit going on at all. As a matter of fact, it's really about the power of superstition and fear and coincidence. Uh, the subject matter, along with Shatner's performance, is some really compelling stuff. Uh, I consider this an absolute uh, vital episode of The Twilight Zone. Both The Twilight Zone and Star Trek are streaming on Netflix. Make time to watch both of these episodes. We stop here at number one, and unsurprisingly, it is I Am Legend. I Am Legend takes place after a plague is swept across the earth and has transformed everyone into ravenous, bloodthirsty monsters that, for lack of a better term, are vampires. Uh, everyone that is except for Robert Neville. Now, every night the vampires surround Neville's house and they try to break through his defenses. Uh, and then every morning, Neville gets up and he repairs the damage and he shores up his defenses and then he drinks himself stupid. Eventually, Neville changes his tune. He starts going out, gathering supplies and looking for survivors and killing the vampires while they sleep. And then eventually he finds another survivor, but not everything with her is as it seems. Too short to be a novel, too long to be a short story, I Am Legend falls into that gray area of the novella, and it is, in my opinion, that it is Matheson's single greatest work. I Am Legend was written in the early 50s, just as the Cold War was heating up, so waves of death and a catastrophic end to society dominated a lot of his plotting at the time, and it also sort of establishes the common tropes of the survival horror scenario. Before I Am Legend, there wasn't really anything like this, and for that, horror owes Matheson a great debt. Um, it's also some of the first new ideas on vampire mythology probably since Dracula, and it also served as a great point of reference for Night of the Living Dead. Through his short-form work on television, Matheson became known for his twist endings. By the time that this uh, novel had been published, uh, he had mastered this art. Uh, the, the story's title hinges on the idea of this twist, and you'll never see the ending coming in a million years. It's incredibly clever. I've always been puzzled by Hollywood adaptations and their willingness to toss out this ending, because this ending is like my favorite ending to any story ever. Raise your glass, suicidalists. This is a toast to the late, great Richard Matheson. Your presence will be missed in horror, sir. We salute you.